Hey everybody, it's Boo Ray Perry from Tampa, Florida. And before we get started, I just want to remind you once again to be sure and check out the Photobomb podcast. I've been doing this podcast for five years, me and my partner Gary Hughes. It is funny, it is irreverent, and we cover all the photography news every single week, and I guarantee you will enjoy it. It's available anywhere that podcasts are found. Just look for Photobomb podcast. And also join my group on Facebook, Pro Photo Talk with Boo Ray Perry, a great community of professional photographers and serious amateurs where we help each other out and we post funny stuff, and you'll enjoy it there too. Be sure and check it out on Facebook. All right, so here's what we're going to talk about this week. It's kind of a deep dive, uh, a little background. I had a lens go bad on me uh, right at the end of a wedding just this last week. It was the uh, Canon 7200mm L-series glass uh, f2.8 lens. This is the, the most pop- probably the most popular lens that Canon makes, and I used it extensively, and the mount has broken. So, well, it hasn't broken, but some of the screws are missing. So Canon won't service my lens anymore. So I'm sending it off to a shop and see if they can put it back together. If they can't put it back together, I'm really going to be in the hot seat because I'm going to have a hard time spending $1,500 or $2,000 on a new lens for a DSLR when I kind of want to switch to mirrorless. And I know I'm going to switch to mirrorless. And that's a big expenditure for a lens that I know I'm going to have to get rid of. So I may be forced into making the jump to mirrorless a little bit sooner than I want to. So then the question becomes, do I go Sony or do I go Fuji? Uh, Now, I made a whole video about this on the channel. If you haven't seen it, uh, be sure and check it out. I'll put it up here. Uh, There's a whole video about me uh, weighing the pros and cons of jumping to mirrorless. And I don't want to go into all of that stuff today. What I want to go into today is one particular aspect of going to crop sensor versus staying with full frame. Because if I go Fuji, I will be going crop sensor. The reason I will do that is because of the weight and because of the size. But there are limitations. There are lots of limitations to going to crop sensor. But today we're just going to look at one, one particular limitation and how I looked at my work to determine how this would affect me. That limitation is depth of field. Now, if you don't understand how moving to a crop sensor affects your depth of field, just remember that if you're shooting with a full frame camera and a full frame sensor, and then you switch to a crop sensor, in order to take this picture, with a sensor that is this big, you have to either back up or you have to zoom out your lens. If you back up or you zoom out your lens, it will affect your depth of field. There are three things that affect depth of field. Aperture value, distance from the camera, focal length of the lens. Backing up and zooming are two of those things. So if you do either one of those things, you will affect your depth of field. So here's a picture taken with a full frame sensor at f4 and 130 millimeters. Now here is a picture taken from the same exact location with a crop sensor at f4 and 130 millimeters on the lens. You see that the crop sensor, because it's cropped, closes in. So in order to get the same picture, you have to back up. So if we start with a picture, full frame sensor f4, 130 millimeters, and we want to reproduce it with the crop sensor, we have to zoom out. In this case, to 70 millimeters. And so now we've reproduced the picture, but the depth of field has changed as well. Because we've zoomed out, the depth of field is not as shallow. So here's the original, and then here's the new one, and it's not as shallow. You can see them side by side, not as shallow. So what we have to do in order to get the depth of field to be the same on the crop sensor is we have to open up the aperture more. In this case, we have to go to f2.8. So we have to zoom out to 70 millimeters and we have to go to f2.8 in order to get the same picture and same depth of field as we do at 130 millimeters and f4 with the full frame sensor. Now this does not affect your exposure. It's very important. When you shoot at f2.8 with a crop sensor, you're letting just as much light in as you do when you shoot at f2.8 with a full frame sensor. So it doesn't affect your exposure. So if you want to go to f2.8 because you need to let light in, great, you're fine. But your depth of field will be about the same as an f4.0 depth of field on a full frame camera. All right, you with me? So for me, having shot full frame, in order for me to make the leap to crop sensor, it would be the same as if I was to get rid of all of my f2.8 lenses and instead get all f4.0 lenses, f4.0 in terms of depth of field, but still have f2.8 in terms of light in the camera. 
because that's basically what you're doing when you move to a crop sensor camera. So I decided to look at a couple of uh, bar mitzvahs and weddings that I shot recently and try and determine if I was really going to miss that more shallow depth of field that you get at f2.8 or f3.5 when you are using a full frame camera versus a crop sensor camera. All right, before we get started on this, I want to make it clear that it is not an exact science. It, it might be an exact science, but when you're trying to compare uh, the depth of field on uh, crop sensor versus full size, full frame sensor, you're, if you're using two different cameras, well, now you're using two different sensors and you might be using two different lenses. So trying to get exactly, exactly what the formula is for the difference between the depth of field can be kind of hard. But everything that I've seen and everything that I've tested myself seems to indicate that it's about one stop. It's about one stop of difference between the depth of field with a full frame sensor versus a crop sensor camera. So here's what I did. I went back to a recent uh, bot mess, for, for example, that I had shot. And in Bridge, you can go right over here to the left-hand side, and you can actually see all your aperture values, and it will tell you how many pictures you shot at each aperture value. So I'm really interested in looking at everything that I shot below f4.0, because if I switch to a crop sensor camera, I can get f4.0 bokeh, right, bokeh. I can get f4.0 depth of field, with a crop sensor camera, but I cannot get f3.5, f3.2, f2.8 depth of field with a crop sensor camera. I can't get the same depth of field that I would get with a medium with a with a full frame sensor camera at those values. All right. So I simply want to look at those pictures. So here they are, right here. These are all of the pictures that I shot during the bat mitzvah that I shot at 2.8, 3.2, or 3.5. So looking through these pictures, I noticed one thing. There were a couple of pictures. There were a couple of times when I was shooting, like during the rehearsal, you can see up here, I was shooting uh, close-ups at range with my big cam, with my big lens, and I was shooting these at f3.5, which, by the way, is pretty darn close to 4.0. So these aren't necessarily like, you know, rock solid must have at 3.5. If I shot these at 4.0, I, I don't think I would be able to tell the difference. What's really worth looking at is the stuff that you shoot at 3.2 and at 2.8. And if you look at the images that I shoot at 3.2 and 2.8 when I'm at a reception, with the exception of a few detail shots that I did, everything else I am shooting at 2.8 and 3.2 because I want to get more light in the camera, right? I'm shooting in a dark room. I'm trying to get a lot of light in the camera. In none of these images am I shooting at 2.8 and 3.2 because I want a shallow depth of field. In fact, in all of these images, I'm shooting really, really wide. With most of these shots, I'm shooting at uh, like a 16 millimeter lens. And I'm shooting wide on purpose. Here's what's funny. I'm shooting wide on purpose because I want a deeper depth of field. I am so afraid when I'm shooting at 2.8 and 3.2 that I'm going to shoot wide because I want to make sure everybody's in focus. I've got to get the whole horror in focus. I've got to get everybody in focus. So what I discovered was that when I shoot at 2.8 and 3.2, I am almost never doing it because I want a shallow depth of field. I am almost always doing it because I want light in the camera. So what does this all mean? Well, I guess what it means is that I shouldn't be worried about the loss of a really shallow depth of field if I make the switch to an APS-C camera. Because if you look at my work, and this wasn't the only bot misfit that I looked at, by the way, I looked at weddings and other things. If you look at my work, and when I just think about my work when I'm working a wedding, if I ever go below f4.0, it is never because I want a super shallow depth of field, with the rare exception of detail shots. Every once in a while, if I'm shooting a ring shot or something along those lines, I might want to be really, really shallow. And in that case, I might go below f4.0. But any other time that I go below f4.0, it's because I want light in the camera. And when I do that, I always am shooting wide. I'm always, almost always shooting with my 16 to millimeter lens. I'm shooting the whole dance floor. I'm shooting the horror. I'm shooting uh, the room, right? And, I, and by going wide, I'm destroying the shallow depth of field that you get at f2.8 anyway. Because when you go wide or when you back up, your depth of field gets much deeper. So 
I guess what I learned this week is that I shouldn't be afraid of the shallow depth of field going away if I switch to APS-C. Now, there are other things to be afraid of, certainly. But I think that I can put this one to rest. I think that, at least in my case, uh, shooting events like I do, that I will not miss the shallow depth of field that you get with a full-frame sensor camera by switching to APS-C. Because the truth is, I almost never really use that shallow depth of field specifically because I want that shallow depth of field. It's just a side effect. And a side effect that, more times than not, I don't even want. More often than not, I am afraid that the shallow depth of field is going to hurt me more than I am artistically trying to use it for effect. So that's what I learned this week. And I, um, I, you know, in doing my research and checking this out, I didn't really find anybody who had made a video specifically about this sort of uh, very deep dive uh, particular thing. So I wanted to make a video about it. I, and if you've watched this video and it's helped you at all in making the decision from switching to full frame to crop sensor, well, then I'm, I'm glad I could help you out. Be sure and check out my podcast. Be sure and join me online. And please subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to see what gear I carry in my pro bag, as well as the gear that I carry uh, with me when I go on vacation and travel and all of that, all you have to go do is go to my website and go to my gear page and everything that I carry is listed there. Thanks for watching.